As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing. Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. Thank you for joining us as you do each and every day. And we always like to say thank you for your love and your prayers and financial support of 3ABN as we continue to take this great gospel of the kingdom into all the world. Today is a special program, and we decided we'd get a bunch of old folks here together. And uh, we'll, we'll get together, we'll talk, we'll reminisce. Now, some of us aren't all that old, and I wasn't referring to you, Tammy. I'm referring to Tim partners with us. But the rest of us, we can hit the senior citizen. But it's my privilege today to have my sister Tammy, brother Kenny, and brother Ronnie with us today. And um, we uh, rarely ever sing together as a family. And I don't know if it's because we know that that's not really our gifts or not, but uh, we, we rarely do as a family, but we said, well, you know what, we're not getting any younger if we're going to do it, and uh, our mother who's resting in Jesus, she would be happy if she knew we were all singing here together and having a great time, so we want you, we'll maybe sing some songs that you know today, we want you at home to, to sing with us, and uh, we're just going to be, we haven't even talked about what we're going to talk about today, but we have already prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct, so we're our, our goal today is that when this program is over, you will have made a decision to draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. So once again, it's good to thank you for all that you do. And uh, right now, we want you to join us uh, in our little conversation and our music. So uh, I'm going to start out here. I'm going to start out with Tim Parton. Brother Tim, how are you doing today? I'm good. I've, I've, I'm, I'm ready for this to happen. I've been hearing about it, and I was afraid that you might cancel it because you have that control, that authority. But, um, but I think the other three were against that because they wanted to do this, right? That's right. Okay. If I'd have known that, I probably wouldn't have handed him the mic. If he'd have said all that, I thought he was going to support me in this. Well, we thought about counseling, but at our age, it may be if we cancel, it might be because one of us are sick or something happens, you know. But honestly, God is good, isn't he? he he's so good, and so we're glad to be here. And let's go back and talk a little bit. Uh, Ronnie, talk about something in your mind sticking up. We grew, grew up together, four boys. Tommy's not here today, but uh, four boys, and then eight years later after me, I'm the youngest boy, came a little girl. So. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, and if I remember that mom had had three boys, and she was wanting a girl so bad, but Danny was born. Oh, no. Oh, and She cried. That was and she cried. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, people still crying over that. Oh. People still crying, but then they didn't stop, so they tried one more time and finally got the girl. Yeah. And, and you were talking about Danny had the authority, and I thought, well, I think me and Kenny, whenever we want to know something, we go to her. There you go. There you go. Uh, okay. Well, tell us how you came into that position, Tammy. <laughs> it seemed after uh, our mom passed away, it just kind of fell onto oh, my see. shoulders. And they were so, uh, what would you, they aggravated me so much when I was little oh, and pulled so many that. stunts that okay. I thought now I'm in charge so I can kind of get them back in yeah. different ways. So Yeah. Says old people dream dreams and have visions, <laughs> and all of that according to the Bible. But uh, now don't get too uptight. We we have a good time. We we do. We have we joke each other a little bit back oh, and yeah. forth, and we always do that. People think something's wrong with us. Probably 
if we didn't. Mm -hmm. But let's talk a little bit about, Kenny, tell us a little bit about the Shelton household growing up, about mom and dad and, you know, he, his, his, his health and that type of thing. We'll talk about that a little bit, and then we'll do a little bit of music. And music was a big part of our life growing up. Yeah. No, it really, it really was. And I was, you know, I, I always loved being around a musical family. I never really participated too much with it, but you could be sure in the Shelton household there was somebody coming over, some group meeting there, you know, somebody playing the piano, somebody singing, or a group at any time. And I mean, it, it just seemed like it went on all the time, all the time. And I think that's where some of the good old gospel music kind of sunk into our heads and our minds. And it's kind of, by the grace of God, it stayed there. And then we go to church and sing these things. But it was, I, I think it was a, the neighbors a lot of times would say, in the summertime especially, you know, we'd open the windows and we'd had a window fan. And they would say the next day, oh, I know you guys had a good time last night. Man, we could hear the music. Now, if it had been me, I'd probably shut the window and shut the window. But they said, you know, we really enjoy that because it, was, it wasn't something that went on in, in every household. You know, it wasn't. And so they were singing and they knew that it was about Jesus and the coming of Jesus. And when there was things that would happen in, in the community, the, in the neighborhood, uh, we, we could always expect that mom would get a call. Or something and say oh, yeah. pray pray for us or pray for a part of the family right here because they knew we were praying family and that we love jesus and uh, that was good to have that on the block and mm -hmm. i don't know about you but i don't know maybe i'll ask let's throw something out here every once in a while i feel i feel the need or the want to to drive by the house that i was born in mm -hmm. i don't know if any of you feel that way or not several times i have done yeah. that in the last several years mm -hmm. just drive by and look at that old house still standing it's still standing and it had a yeah. lot of us who did a lot of building on it and i don't yeah. know and we were 12 and 13 yeah, years yeah, of age very old. yeah the music room we built yeah. for dad remember the music right. room on wired the back? It. how old was you when you wired the yeah. well i probably 12. early teens yeah. very early 12, 13, teens, yeah. mm -hmm. wired the house and like i said whenever we built an upstairs because yeah. it was just a basically a four-room house and we had too many guys, you know, yeah, so two we... Two bedrooms. Yeah, two bedrooms, that's right. So we uh, opened up an attic, you know, and it was only six foot right in the middle. So when you walked, you had to walk right down the middle. And Not that pulled, that was a problem for 12 us. feet wide, but it went <laughs> yeah. down to three feet. Yeah. And we just pulled down stairs. So we just pulled down the... Yes. stairs to get up and down every night you know they're not that that good of stairways and but, uh, and, and there no heat no air really no there. designated heat or air conditioner but uh, an hour or two before bedtime remember mom would say pull the curtain back so the heat can go upstairs <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and, and that was it but you know i i really i'm like kenny i appreciated though i mainly remember friday nights when we gathered around the mm. piano and that's when and, you know, the only song that the folks ever taught us was gospel music. Yeah. That's the only thing that they ever taught us. And, and it was so natural for us because mom and dad did a real nice duet, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and she played the piano very well, and, and dad always played the guitar, and they played a very uh, nice duet and sang in gospel. And so each one of us then, as we got a little bit older, Kenny picked up a guitar and uh, he was more rhythm, and then Danny picked up a guitar and did a little more lead on it, and then I picked up the bass, you know, and so uh, our brother Tommy was a grand piano player, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we began to sing, and each one of us picked up an instrument, and it, it just seemed a natural thing to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. What happened was our, our um, uh, father was disabled at, what, 36 years old with a heart attack, and um, so times were pretty tough then before that you know he was a trucker and had a truck and we used to go we call everything from picking glasses busting bottles of you know glass and and filling up the trucks taking them to st louis to really he was a recycler now yeah, we re could call recycler, him yeah. Yeah. beautiful absolutely yeah. junk you know metals you know iron steel brass you know whatever copper whatever we could get we'd go to the junkyards and say hey down there's an old motor go get that it's got some copper so we'd bring it and then we'd sell all of that but then later and then we used to go to Indiana every fall, every in the fall, and pick tomatoes every summer and come back from fall uh, when we were really young. Uh, I think my last time I was 9 or 10 years old, but when Dad had a heart attack. But I don't think Tammy ever went. She was young enough. She didn't go, but we'd go live with the Amish. And there was times that we, with my Uncle Olin and all his family, my Uncle Bud and my Grandma and Grandpa, Tim and we stayed, well, there was two or three years, Tommy remembered it better than me, but we stayed in a barn 
but no running water, no electricity, but they, he said there was cardboard in between the dividers between families. Mm -hmm. And so it was just a horse barn, you know, that you lived in all summer that, because you were working for the Amish and they didn't have electricity or running water. So when we lived in the old Amish houses, we didn't have that either, but they did have a number nine wash tub, if some of you know what that is. So, right, we'd stand in that, and, uh, you know, t it, once a week, Kenny said, like, whether you needed right, it or not. Yeah, once a week, and uh, run barefooted most of the time. But, you know, when, when after my dad was disabled and my mother worked hard, and so we all helped, and we helped the neighbors and mowed yards and painted, did whatever we could do to help, you know, support the family. But through it all, um, you know, my, my mom and dad stayed faithful. My, my mother became a Christian the year I was born in 51. My dad, he continued to play. He played country music and, you know, the, I don't know what you call them, bars or mom used to call them honky tonks, but out in the, used to do it. And, and so for several years, he had a band called uh, Tommy Shelton and the Melody Kings and they had a radio program, but at, at, he became a Christian in um, 1955, I think. And so a few years later, several things happened. He finally said, I just give up. I know what the Lord wants me to do. But he was faithful after that. And so though we didn't have much income, we did have a lot of love in the family. And we always, it was never, did anyone ever doubt when Sabbath morning came we were going to church or not? No, never. You never had an option, did you? No. No, it's just. It's like going to school. There was no option. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So anyway. So I was thinking about, you was talking about going to school. We went to the grade school that we could walk over just three or four blocks to our join our grade school where we went, you know. And, of course, the three of us was very competitive, and so we liked to play basketball and softball and baseball mm -hmm. and whatever else, you know. Um, that there was a lot of fun mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in those days. Oh, yeah. When you look back on those, you think those were some of the best times of our life. Mm. You know, you didn't have a care in the world about anything except we're going down, you know, take the basketball and we're going down to school to play ball. Yeah. You know, that's where yeah. we were going. And so to me, it was a good atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. to be growing up in, even though we were very poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We look back now and we say we were some of the poorest in the school. We just know. didn't know it. We didn't know time. it at the time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, we thought everybody had holes in the bottom of their shoes, you know. Who knew? And got you their know? clothes from the Goodwill. Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. That's true. You were homemade shirts. Mama, mom made some nice tell homemade us, tell shirts. Tell us about mom's shirt, and then we'll sing a song. Tell us about what? mom's sewing. She worked at a dress factory. Yeah, and right? it, they call it piecework. So that means the more you put out, the more you're going to make. So she learned to really sew quickly. I needed a shirt one time. You know, there's some had holes. She or whatever. had a little old uh, hand uh, singer. Singer, little thing with the yeah, foot yeah. and whatever. And she said, well, I'll, I'll make you one. Make me a shirt. In about 15 minutes, she had a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm thinking, wow, that's good. I tried it on, and one collar hung about here. Yeah. And the other one was up to here. I said, Mom, isn't that a little strange? I mean, got one collar is a little long. Couldn't we do it? She said, Kitty, don't worry about it. Nobody's going to notice it, yeah, man. Just nobody. go ahead. Be, you're lucky you got a shirt. Here, here's what they did notice. Here's what they did notice. And I look back at some of the old pictures that we had in school. But our shirts, what happened, they would give my mother. She worked at a dress factory, so that would give you a hint what they, what they made. Dresses, right? So they would give her the remnants. And so she would come home and make us shirts. So we might have a white shirt with flowers all over it, yeah. you know. And, that, and now if you're in Hawaii or somewhere, maybe okay. <laughs> but in southern Illinois in the wintertime, so she would just use whatever dress material. So we had all these shirts. And as Kenny said, she didn't really go by patterns. Oh, no. He said she could put together. One time he said, Mom made the fastest I've seen her. She made a whole shirt in eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and the beautiful part about it is, if it didn't fit the one she made it for, you just hand it to the next boy. <laughs> Say, well, that's, that's Danny, that is too little for running. Well, Danny, that fits you, and it's like this on me. <laughs> yeah. I was three years younger. You, you couldn't know, complain. So you couldn't yeah. complain if you did. It was taken away from you. <laughs> so no. if you need a shirt, you just kind of, yeah. We know I'd, about hand-me-downs. It's good. Sure. It was, we do. Yeah. Speaking of that, was uh, the hand-me-downs that they, they did always uh, give us gospel music, you yeah. know, because after uh, they became Christians, and, of course, that was the main music. My dad, he liked to play music and had guys come over and they'd do some other country stuff on Tuesday night or whatever. But, you know, in general, gospel music's all we ever, as Ronnie said, that's the only thing they ever taught us. And uh, so one of the first songs that I remember ever singing with my mother is Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. Then I think we're going to add and make a little medley because when we look back over it all, God is good.
Everybody said uh, amen, right? Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and talk for a little bit more, and then maybe we'll get another song going here. But I'd like to start out, each of us, we were raised in a Christian home, but you can have Christian parents all you want and grandparents and everybody around you, but at some point, each and every one of us, Tim, have to make a decision for ourselves that we want to serve the Lord. You're going to serve the Lord, you're going to serve, serve the devil. There's no in-between. You can't do both, Right. So at some point, we have to make that decision. So I kind of want to go back. Maybe, Ronnie, I'll start with you. Ronnie was the one. My mother was a rice, and the rices were very quiet. Well, I remember going to my grandpa Rice's house, and we, my mom would have us come and sit in. He was a retired coal miner, but we'd sit in the house, and you could hear the clock tick-tock, tick-tock, because he didn't say much. My mom would do all the talking, and so we were just kind of, quiet there. Now, our Grandpa Shelton's, we were running wild outside doing all kinds of stuff, but it was more formal at the Rice's. So my grandpa, he didn't say much. Uncle Robert, you know, uh, Uncle Charlie, those didn't talk. Now, my mother did a lot of talking, and Aunt Lena did quite a bit, but most of the boys and Uncle Lowell, he, he talked quite a bit. But Ronnie, we always said he's a Rice. My mother said he looked like the Rice. He's just like my family. So we're growing up. He was the quietest one in the house. Am I right? They always said, uh, you know, uh, my whole life I heard this. I know Tommy and Kenny and Danny and Tammy. Now, which one are you? <laughs> you know, I said, I, I'm the only one left. You know, I'm the only one left. I'm Ronnie. You know, they said, well, well, we never hear from you. Mm. I say, in our house, I can't get a word in edgewise. Because <laughs> you know what talkers is? Well, some of our family is, you know, and our mom could talk, too, as well, you know. It, it may have come down from her, but she was a big talker. And, you know, Danny, I said, one day when we all get to heaven, it's going to be so wonderful when, when I, I, I see my mom and my dad there. And they said, Ronnie did what? He became a pastor, <laughs> you know. Ronnie, who never talks, mm. pastored the church, and, and I did, you know, as, as God worked in my life. A bit. Who did? I, I was in my mid-50s. For many, 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 many years. Many, many years. And, so you but, started preaching when? When did the Lord it, call you to preach? Uh, actually, you, you know, the call actually came considerably earlier, but I chose to ignore it. Mm. Okay. Uh, when Rick Odell, yeah. you know, Brother Rick, whenever he used to come into my garage, and he and I would talk all the time, you know, and... and uh, I'll tell you about Rick first, and then I'll get to this. Mm -hmm. yeah, I always had a box of literature there, mm -hmm. and Rick was uh, what Assembly sort of, of God. Assembly of God pastor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, West Frank. but he went to school with us, and so yeah. he knew the Shelton family. I mean, you and him sang oh, uh, yeah. together. You know, great guy, exactly. But I would witness to Rick when he'd come into the garage, and, and I always had a box of literature there, 
And when he'd come in, he'd start rummaging through there and picking out, mm -hmm. you know, literature from our church. And, and anyway, I, I witnessed to him and witnessed to him. And finally, one day he had uh, picked all through the box. And he, I said, Rick, have you got this one? He said, yeah, I got that. I said, how about this? He said, I got that. And he said, <laughs> in fact, he said, I've got everything in the box. He said, I just notified your conference and said, send me one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he did. But anyway, during that time, mm -hmm. once in a while, I would fill in at one of the local churches, mm -hmm. you know. And I really felt God's call then, but I wasn't ready to handle it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to do it for 15 years, maybe later, right. you know. And I was like 57 or something whenever I finally took a call mm -hmm. um, to become a pastor in, in uh, first in Arkansas and then in Oklahoma. And so anyway, one day as I was going with this, one day when we get to heaven and mom's going to say, well, I knew these boys, you know, were preachers because mm -hmm. they could talk. They had a way, a, a gift of gab. She's going to say, but who are Ronnie? you? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> She'll say, what happened to my Ronnie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. my Ronnie didn't <laughs> talk, but it'll be wonderful yes. whenever we get there. And <laughs> so God did work in my life, and he loosened my tongue, if you will, you to where go. I could talk. Right. This, this may be a good time to, to, to bring it out, because we want to get everything out in the open today. I think it's a good time to get it out. Well. When we were younger, Ronnie, from the time we can remember, he loved, he literally loved anything that had to do with auto mechanics or electrical or wiring. And Ken and I particularly, we love sports. So no matter what sports was there, that's exactly what we wanted to do. And that's all we were all about was the sports. But we all learned to work with our hands because when you're poor and you don't have a lot of income coming in, you learn to do things. But since Ronnie was three years older than me, like we'd get an old bicycle. We never got new ones, but we'd get a piece of one or somebody give us one and Ronnie would put them together, you know, to make a little bicycle. But even if my chain came off, I would go to put it on, he'd say, let me do that. Well, anytime something went wrong, my front wheel went bad or tire, he'd say, I, I wanna, I'll want fix that. So I told him, because of him, now I can do carpentry work and a lot of stuff, but I'm a mechanical invalid because <laughs> he, never, he never let me do anything. Even my first car, I went out to where you guys were working at John Martin's out west of West Frankfurt, and I bought my first car, I was 16. It was a yellow 1956, yellow and black, Chevrolet, 283, I think, the engine. And so I bought the car here. It, no, it was 55. first one was 55 Ford yeah. and uh, Crown Victoria. Yeah. So I bought this, Tim, for $25. But the motor was over here in a bunch of, <laughs> and they had bushel baskets for all the parts. <laughs> so Ronnie was 19. So I said, Ronnie, uh, John says he'll sell me this car for t 25 bucks for the car and 25 for the motor so he said well okay no I'll problem put it together <laughs> all right, yeah. so all i did was we went to the folks house and they poured that concrete uh, platform out there or a concrete uh, slab slab and so i just would hand ronnie stuff and he put that whole thing together 19 years old now the only trouble is i didn't get to drive it very much because we didn't have any exhaust it didn't have an exhaust <laughs> so from the manifold out it, it sounded roared. like a helicopter yeah, it and so First time I drove it, the police stopped me and said, well, where's your muffler? And I said, they didn't know it's not only not a muffler. It didn't nothing. come with the car. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's nothing. The muffler going to Yadro's uptown would have cost more than the whole car. Yeah. So we didn't have that. So, But anyway, Ronnie, I've forgiven you, but because of, well, here's, here's one thing. Anything I get, anytime anything goes wrong mechanically, I just say, Ronnie. I need you because you, it's your fault I'm a mechanical invalid. So now I've got that out in the public knows it, Ronnie. He's still, he's still with it about all that stuff. Uh, the little girl that works for me, um, her well, alternator went out, mm -hmm. and uh, she went to one of these auto stores to get one, and it just blowed her away. It was $265. No, and so, you know, she doesn't make that much. And so I called him, you and I said. pay her more. I, I know. It's another <laughs> subject. <laughs> another subject. I don't get her started. <laughs> So I call him. I said, "That's ridiculous." Two hundred. I said, "Do you know where they rebuild them? You know, they used to rebuild them, and you mm -hmm. could buy." And he said, yeah. "Those that you buy at the store are rebuilt." And he said, "Go to eBay." And he said, "You'll get one less than a hundred dollars." So we went to eBay, seventy bucks. Okay. So he's able to take that other one. Uh, I said, "You're a genius." He said, "I." <laughs> he said, "I don't like to brag." <laughs> uh, hardly. I don't. Oh, that sounds like well. Brag. Speaking of bragging, then let's. Why don't we feature him since we've been talking to him? We're going to do a song. Uh, it's a song that, uh, remember Roy Groves and uh, 
Tommy and John Hartley and Red Morrison, a bunch of those yeah. sang, and I guess we probably learned it from them. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. And uh, Roy would, now let us. You know, he had this big, deep bass voice and great guy. Yeah. And we grew up, they were just a block from our house, and Tommy started playing the piano for them when he, an adult quartet, he was just 11 years old. And so they'd travel weekends, and so maybe there'd be a good time to try that song. What do that, you think? It, as you probably heard that, Tim, but Tommy was playing for live Sunday morning radio for the yeah. quartet when he was like 11. Yeah. You know, you played live, <laughs> then you drove out to the radio station and went in, and yeah. it was on the air live. And uh, yeah. imagine saying my piano player is 11 years old. <laughs> <laughs> with an adult quartet, but I know yeah. Tim was playing that early, too, with, <laughs> with groups. But anyway, why don't we get ready, and uh, we'll sing, Let Us Have a Little Talk with Jesus. And those of you at home, sing it with us if you know it. Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn, and you'll know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. Sit down on that one. <laughs> sit, sit back down. Well, uh, that was a little rough, but what do you expect, right? That's right. Thank you, Tim, for. Um, well, wouldn't, wouldn't we be a mess without him right now? Oh, man. Oh, mercy. This would be a mess. This is a lot of fun, though, because actually, about the only song that we ever sing, and we'll have to do it here in a few minutes, because our mom made sure that we did, is what a day that will be. <laughs> you know, Glorious Day. And that's about the only song we ever sing in, in many, many years. So this is something new. We're branching out today. But uh, Dee said that we had a few requests to sing, but we said we're going to sing anyway. So <laughs> not really, but she did say, well, I think it'd be good, you know, get the family together, and so why not? Why and uh, so we don't claim to be great singers and great musicians, but we, we do believe it's a way to serve the Lord. Amen. And I've seen music for so many years. It was music that really helped 3ABN because when we first – we're building the station. Melody and I were traveling and singing in churches. So everywhere we went, we got to tell people about this new TV station that the Lord had impressed us to be a part of and to, to reach the world. So music has always been a part of our family. We talked about our mom again. Her family, um, did, they were all singers and some of them good musicians like Charlie, a steel guitar player in the country band. And 
you know, so they were good. And I think Robert played guitar and my Aunt Lena sang and played the piano and my mom. So virtually all of them did some. We kind of got it from both sides. Of course, our dad, uh, his side, you know, his brothers and sisters, they all sang, you know. Our cous uh, cousins, you know, yeah. all sang and, and pretty nicely, you know. So we really got a little bit from both sides of the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of you got a lot more than others of us did. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel those cheated. Those I feel a little bit cheated, yeah. Well, those, right. those times no, no, that no, you guys cheated. were singing around the piano and playing the guitar, and that, yeah. I was out in the little shed working on the lawnmower we were talking <laughs> about, you see. So my my uh, idea was a splint, you know, where you guys were so centered you know, on music and then on mm. sports. And uh, yeah. I, I added the auto repair as well. <laughs> yeah, that, that came from my mom's side too. Yeah, you know? oh yeah. Ronnie didn't uh, continue like into high school and years later, Kenny and I played ball for many, many years. In fact, I just played last Sunday night, I think. <laughs> so I haven't quit already at 70, I probably should. But um, you, you won the Eighth grade, wasn't that the Illinois State? The state yeah, of uh, Illinois, Pole Vaulting, yeah. Pole Vaulting mm -hmm. when he was in the eighth grade. Oh boy. And then a few days after that, he was Pole Vaulting at home and broke your collarbone, right? That, that's right. That's Larry Holder's house. You, you know, and I was surprised, uh, Danny, that our mom kept mm -hmm. little clippings that come out in the newspaper. Uh, yeah. Before mm -hmm. she passed away, she gave me some clippings that she had saved yeah. now for over 40 years, and now they're over 50 years old. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember one of them said, uh, Ronnie Shelton pitches uh, no hitter in Park League. You know, so we played baseball as well. Oh, yeah. Park. Sure. And so we've got pictures, I think, of the three of us standing there in our ball for, uh, uniform. You know, yeah. Standing oh, yeah. out by, you remember the arch in front of the house, you know, and the picket mm -hmm. fence, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was wonderful. I mean, it, it, it kept us off the streets, let's say. Oh, it did. That, that and the parents who believed in whippings back then. We called, yeah. there's a spanking, there's a whipping, and then there's a whooping. <laughs> whooping. And our dad believed in the whoopings. That's the worst. <laughs> you get the whoopings, but we only gave it to us when we needed it. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Kenny, let's jump. We got a little time. We can do a couple mm -hmm. more songs. Let's jump to you. The thing about Kenny is he always wanted to be a preacher from the time he was little, right? Or am I no. wrong so far? <laughs> no. no. No, not at all. It's, Tell it's, us. It's about interesting, it. though, it's, it's at an early age, and I'm, I'm think at least in my mind seven or eight years old or nine mm -hmm. why thoughts would come in your mind like that that was I will never be a preacher mm -hmm. and I, I, mean, I don't know why they kept coming in we go to church and we hear a different one speak all the time and blah, blah. and I, anyway I had my reasons for that because I, I thought maybe they need to go out and get a real job these <laughs> preachers you know what I'm saying learn to work with their hands do something yeah. and because we was taught that's kind of can I say, that's what a man did. You, you go out and you work, you get a job, you, you do whatever. And then my poor little mind right then, I can't feel. I said, man, that's the last thing I want to be. In fact, I'll never be one of those. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that God knows better, that he has a plan for each and every one of us. And like Ronnie also, too, you know, I, I turned down the call quite a few years. In fact, it was seven years. It's interesting. Seven years I turned it down. And I knew that it should be, but didn't want to. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful God still, you know, comes and he still works through the Holy Spirit. And I know he's doing it to many people who are at home right now. Through the Holy Spirit, you're impressed that you, you need to be singing or your gift, teaching, preaching, whatever it might be, music, whatever. You know, I just encourage you, don't waste much time as I wasted. Don't do it. You know, be happy in Jesus and do the, what gift he gave you. Just, just continue to work with it. And as you see, Brother Tim will say, he's multiplied it, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't start out the way, the day that, way you play right now. And I'm not trying to lift. I'm just saying I, it changes. But you put a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of effort into it, as, as my brother Danny uh, uh, did in, in his singing and playing the guitar. And, you know, I'll, I've often said, and I tell people, I'm, I'm thankful he didn't. I'm going to be careful. Close your ears, children. I I told Danny to shut up several times as we were <laughs> growing up because he always had a guitar. Yeah. He was too little to put his arm almost all the way around it, and he'd be playing. And then what really got me at the time was he closed his eyes, yeah. and he was singing, which I didn't understand. He was singing honor and glory to, to the Lord, and I didn't, I didn't have that. And I didn't understand that you could, you know, be singing praises unto the Lord. And so I'd go by and I'd say, man, this guy loves his self. Come out of it, Danny. <laughs> you know, and I'm thankful that he never did. 
So, you know, we, we learn from those things, and I, I, I'm grateful and thankful for a lot of those experiences that we had while we were growing up. We, we learned a lot of things. We learned to, to, to share yeah. even what little bit had or didn't give to somebody else first, and uh, we had parents that encouraged that mm -hmm. all along, and I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. Now, like with our folks with Tommy, mm -hmm. he played the piano hours every day. Yes. And we had a little house, and it wasn't big enough oh, to have... Uh, a, a piano and I guess when we were getting close to teenagers some we got a first TV but when the piano was going on you could never watch TV you couldn't hear anything <laughs> so we complained so much at one time in the winter mm -hmm. mom we helped him move the piano out on the front porch now it was a front porch that wasn't closed in oh. so Tommy instead of quitting and put on earmuffs and gloves <laughs> and went out and we couldn't believe we hear all this music going on out there so finally mm. my mom started crying yeah she said look if that kid loves music this much we're going to bring it in the house yes. and get used to it she said we're going to get used to it mm. so when when anybody would complain yes. he'd say hey look i'd rather be singing than 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 smarting off or or you know acting up or whatever so just leave them alone They'd say, Danny's singing again. Yeah. Just leave him alone. If he's singing, let him go. He's not bothering anybody. So, <laughs> so that was about it. Now, we're going to get ready to do what a day that will be. But, Tammy, give us a little bit of your memories with Mom growing up in music. I mean, she, you, Tammy always, she came out singing, I think. Mm -hmm. And the older, she's always had, my dad was, I tell you, your little sister can sing, boy. He says, this, this girl can sing. So he was your biggest fan, you know. Uh, and so, was yeah, <laughs> and uh, but you today, you're, you're a Christian, you and Bruce, you, you, you love the Lord. Why? I mean, you could have gone any different, any way that you wanted. And it's not that we all haven't been here or there, but you, you end up, you know, in our sunset years, they say serving the Lord. I mean, why? Yeah, because what, as you learn, as you get older, what else is there? You, uh, oh. this old world is just uh, a mess, and mm -hmm. uh, the things that we've all went through, and mm -hmm. deaths, and sicknesses, and things, and mm -hmm. um, you, you learn that if you can't depend on God, what, what in the world? What, what do you do? That's right. If you're in dire straits and you can't get on your knees and say, "God, help me," mm -hmm. well, well, there's no hope for people. Mm -hmm. And yes. so, I, I want to make sure that uh, that people realize that that the only hope you have in this world is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's the only hope. That's Come the on. that's the only encouragement yeah. that you mm -hmm. have because you know somebody is stronger than you. That somebody's in control. You're not in control of everything. Mm -hmm. But I would like to say I think that we had the best parents that we could have ever had. Mm -hmm. um, you know, after I got kids and, and I'd get frustrated and scream at them and you know yell at them and and I I started thinking you know what I, I never. I never heard mom raise her voice. I, I never heard dad yell. Mm -hmm. I never heard them yell at each other, you know, for that matter. I mean, if you was going to get a whipping, you got a whipping, but nobody was mad. Nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody blew up and was angry or, you know, I mean, it, it, they, and my dad was totally objective. He was the kind, it, you make your bed, you lie in it, yes. you know, yes. and so these are the rules, and if you break them, you know, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. There's consequences. You know, and, uh, there was one good thing. Is, uh, I, I think it's good for all the homes. It would be good for my own home, and especially when you have kids in it, is that mom and dad had differences mm -hmm. at times, mm -hmm. but they would never discuss the differences mm -hmm. when we were around. Right. You notice that? Yeah. Uh, my dad would say sometime, we'll talk about it later, honey. Yeah. I thought, Man, we wish they would have. We, we would have think we we're yeah. making inroads and could have yeah. got in to do whatever but yeah. whatever one said yeah. no the other one I, I absolutely said no so there yeah. was no like well i'll go see mom yeah in fact oh. if you did that you got in big trouble yeah. oh yeah you got in worse trouble yeah uh -huh. yeah but yeah we um, they set such a good example mm -hmm. uh, for us and i you know of course they wasn't perfect who is but um mm -hmm. I, I sometimes, as you said, uh, about once every few months, I drive by the house mm -hmm. on Warden Street. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to meet on Warden we'll Street. We'll have to meet, <laughs> and I get tears okay. in my yes. eyes. Yeah. But, you know, we thought we had such a huge backyard and oh, everything, and it looks like a postage stamp <laughs> now. I don't know what happened. We had a big <laughs> hill that we thought if we went down on the bike oh, yeah. that it was just yeah. the most yeah. scary thing, and either the mine has settled it or we <laughs> was fantasizing because well, it's just a little bitty maybe, thing now. Maybe you as a little girl thought, I don't think the hill scared us, but we, mm -hmm. we did everything up and down that hill yes. that you can Talked think about of. going back and looking at the old home pl oh. place well if you remember i even he bought, bought it he bought yeah. it i right. bought it for yeah. a few years mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and, it, and i loved it because you had it you know and it's really whenever you felt like that 
uh, you're going through something and the world was caving in, Come you on. start looking back to mm -hmm. where exactly. you were happiest. Mm -hmm. you know? And it took me back to the old house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So now, instead of looking back, we can look forward. Amen. That's going to be my intro to what a day good. that will be. I think we can try it. Now, who sings the melody, Kenny or me, or do Please. we know here, Tim? We'll have to figure <laughs> out a Kenny key. Does. Think I'm Kenny does it? shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, and leads me through that promised land, what a day, glorious day, that will be. sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. a few more minutes but maybe we could get in another song but I think maybe right now Kenny why don't you look to the folks at home there's somebody watching this program maybe they're looking back in a time in their life which was the best time they feel like but we got to let them know that that well that's great the future is much better yeah. what are you saying a few minutes to folks at home yeah you know as we sang that song what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see that is our hope that's our encouragement, I believe, in this world that we're living in today. You know, I, I see people in here of people being depressed. They're taking their own lives. They're not sure what direction to go. They're looking for answers. And, you know, I thank God 3ABN is out there because they're providing answers based on the Word of God. But we're talking about serious situations, serious problems in the world. And God gives us the answers from his word. If we would just go to it and just simply say, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. I've often said myself, for if I miss heaven, number one, it'll be because I've chosen. Mm -hmm. Jesus has done everything possible for me to be there. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's no reason. All of heaven would be emptied for you if you're in trouble. All of heaven would be emptied if you'll just call on the name of Jesus. But your purpose for being here, and so many miss it in this world, and I maybe I missed it for a, a long time. And now I think God's given me insight. If you miss heaven, Kenny, you've missed your purpose for being here. There's no other reason for any of us to go through this mess. If this, if this world, you know, if this all it has to offer, 
it, it, it's a sad thing to, to play on mankind, and God wouldn't do that. Yeah. There's got to be more. I realize as a very young person, you know, every time we'd go to church and we'd come home, I keep thinking, there must be something more. There must be something more than just, you know, Sunday morning you get up and mom starts doing the laundry and da 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 da. There is something more. And let me encourage you with that. Jesus is the more. He says, I'm coming back and I want to take you home. So I just encourage each and every one of you right now, make that decision. It's a decision you will never, ever regret. Please don't put it off. It's not for tomorrow. It's not next week, not next year. It's right now. And you'll never be sorry that you did. We need his blood. We need the victory that he gives us each and every day. And I look forward when Jesus shall come. You know why, bro? Because this world's not my home. All right. I think I finally learned that. Yeah. It's not my home. I'm just passing through. Is that something we could sing? <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. I think we'll try it. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world. friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Over in glory land, we'll live eternally. The saints on every shouting victory their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore and i can't feel at home in this world anymore oh lord you know i have no friend like you if heaven's not my home then lord what will i do the angels beckon me from heaven's open door And I can't feel at home in this world anymore I can't feel at home in this world anymore Okay, right. well, we, we did. I'm going to have to sit down again on that one. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Right. You know what? I'm thinking right now, Tim doesn't have a microphone, so it doesn't give him a chance to say very much, and I'm not going to share at this time, but I'd like you to play through that once. Just play through. Give us a really good old Southern gospel feel to that. Anything you want, anywhere you want. It's yours. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> no well, telling if he would have practiced first. Well, he missed two keys. I mean, he didn't make bad. I don't mean he meant hit bad notes. It's just there's two keys out of, what, 88 that you didn't hit. You only eight, hit like 87. Okay. What was that you just said? 86. Sorry, I can't count very good. What was that okay. you just said about putting an ad in the paper to find a piano player? Well, no, I repent. I, you, 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 we keep Tim. Amen. No, honestly, it's an, it's, uh, thank you. Honestly, it's an incredible gift that God oh, has given him. And, and we were talking about it earlier, Kenny, what you were saying is 
Tim just, he didn't get where he is by just sitting at home and just reading the paper, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. Not that that's always yeah. bad, but I'm saying the gift that you have, God gave it to you, but you know, anything that we do, we can get better at. In other words, what we're doing, and so like your first sermon, you probably hear your first sermon, you guys, you might shudder a little bit and think, did I really, was that me? Um, I, I heard uh, just a few years ago, four or five years ago, Kay Kuzma sent me when I was at ASI in 1985 in Big Sky, Montana. First time I ever went anywhere and they never heard of ASI. And so they were there and ended up that they asked me to speak Friday afternoon, not because they'd scheduled me or plan on me, but there was 7,500 feet or so up in the mountains and it was raining and pouring. And so they had a few hundred people. And so finally somebody had heard about what we were getting ready to do. We were so new, I think you were just pouring concrete on the, the floor of the big building of the uplink yes. building. Yes. And so we were there and, and I'm, I'm going to get all, now, touched up here I, I'm, I'm going to go back just, just to the goodness of God we're there and I, I want to go back for just a moment Kenny yes. because what you were saying earlier about what we do mm -hmm. and what we for the honor and glory of God yes. and how God blesses that I had no idea and it just hit me I thought about Mae Chung and when I met her for the first time that people didn't understand we were saying well the Lord's impressed me to build a television station reach the world and they're like oh yeah whatever May Chung's like, can you, you come to my room? I want to hear about this. As soon as we did, she said, this is of the Lord. I'm going to support it. Mm. And literally from that moment on, then Kay Kuzma got involved. Other people got yeah. involved. McKee's got involved. And this thing began to grow and begin to grow and begin to grow. And I'm, I'm, I'm so amazed by that because when I listened, Kay Kuzma sent me the tape that asked me to sing. She sent me the tape and said, this is your talk at ASI, you know, now 30 some years ago, 30 plus years ago. And when I listened to it, I'm like, I wouldn't have given to me. I mean, it was so terrible. Really. I mean, I, it was not like you get up and you can sing and you can do, but God blesses us in spite of us. And so what it hit me. Well, we may feel like we got a better delivery now, or we hope to have it, but it's not really about the delivery. It's who's delivering it. That's it's not. the Holy Spirit's that yeah. delivering it into the hearts and the minds of the people. That makes all the difference in the world. But I can go back. You talk about, Ronnie, going back to your home yeah. and, and bringing tears to your eyes. Yes. I'm that way when I look back over some of these miracles yes. that sometimes even by myself, I can sit around at night and I think, yes. you know, God had this all planned. And I want you to think about right now, God has your life planned. Yes, he does. And even today, we got a call. I got two calls, literally one back to back. Someone said, my, my, my son is on, on, on drugs. He's having a, a hard go and a hard time. Will you pray for him? That's such an honor to somebody to call you and say, can, can you pray with me and join hands with me? And then someone called me that we had, Yvonne and I had met two years ago. We've only met him one time and it was in the Bahamas but every now and then we talk or we text back and forth and I got a call and said I was surprised I haven't heard from him in many many months maybe a year and said my husband asked me to call you now I've hardly talked to the husband at all and and, and you know from the background I assumed he wasn't a Christian and what have you but he said call, call Danny and why call Danny? Not because of Danny, because she said he saw Yvonne and I, and he, he knew, I'm trying to say this as delicately as I can, but Jesus working through us, that he right now, there's some bad reports that he could be getting. And so they've already got some, and so he wanted prayer. And I said, what a privilege that is. See, God knows each and every one of our lives, and he knew us before the foundation of the world. And so right now, you may be going through some terrible things in your life. We all like to look back, as Ronnie said, but we more, I think we more want to look forward because when we look forward, we find this world is not our home. We are just passing through. Can I share something yeah. really quick? The little girl that works for me, serious home life that she came from, very sweet little girl. Um, she 
talked to her mom the other day and her mom said you know she said i don't know why i got some books in the mail from the 3 abn she knows that um that's what, what we do and everything and uh, i said did she throw them away because that's kind of what i thought and she said no she's in the, she's reading every night and she said she said this book she said i really like it there's three of them and she said it's called it's from uh, a guy named danny shelton and alexa said mom that's Tammy's brother that and she said you're kidding and so now you've planted the seed through those books she's reading them every night and she got on the phone with me and she said you know what some of what that says really makes sense to me Good. Okay. <laughs> all right God has their life planned from the beginning and he has something special for you John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal kill and to destroy but Jesus says I'm come that you may have life and have life abundantly. Yeah. We're blessed. If we died today, we've all hit. Tammy's not quite there to us. The rest of us have hit our 70s, so every day is a, is a uh, bonus, yeah. you know, is a gift. And, but God has something planned, no matter how old or how yes. young you are. So we're asking today for you to consider, if you haven't already, ask Jesus into your heart and your life today. Say, Lord, please forgive me for my sins. I'm a sinner. And you've said, the Bible says, Jesus says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we can, by faith, we won't instantly be perfect. We will when we see Jesus, but we'll be struggling. We're going through this process of sanctification. But you know what? God will be there. He's going to take your burden. In a time when the world is so messed up, you turn on the news and you see not only coronavirus, but all the things that's happening you say, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Because this world just can't go on much longer. So today is the day of salvation. So I'm going to ask that Tammy just say a short prayer. we got a few seconds. And for those at home, for those that need Jesus, they'll accept him today. Lord, thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to minister to others and for others to minister to us. And Lord, we pray that you would impress anyone that is, is watching this that uh, Jesus is what they need. There is no other hope on earth but Jesus, and he gave his life for us. And he is taking care of us every minute of every day. He has our lives mapped out. Sometimes we think we know more than him, but we don't because he can count every hair on our head. And he knows what it is that we should do. And we have to depend on him, Lord. There's nothing else in this world to depend on. Thank you again for this opportunity. Be with each and every one that is viewing this program and touch their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.